you just saw is really not even all of it. I'll admit, I have a problem. I got a problem with knives. I got a problem with reels. I got a problem with tackle. I got a problem with certain lures. The funny thing is, I'm single, no kids. I'll have nobody to leave it to. At least a bunch of you out there got someone to leave it all to. I sort of made a joke in an earlier post on my blog or the community page on YouTube or something. I made a joke. I got all this <laughs> and I got no one to leave it to. So if you're a young guy and you know, you want to be written in, you better be nice to me. <laughs> that was the joke. I guess the state will get it all boat, all the rods and reels and knives. And that's, I mean, the funny thing is it's not, that's not all what you just saw. That's not all of it. There's more, a lot more, a lot more of everything. Just if I just count the coolers that I have, I guess it's borderline, you know, sickness or something, but at least it's a healthy sickness. At least it's a tax write-off for me. If you're watching this, it's because you probably have a sickness also. So maybe we can side with these people who have a sickness. I'm going to call it a sickness or an addiction or whatever. Okay. That is extremely harmful to them and everybody around them. So not to be all super serious, but at least you know fishing and and knife collecting and lures and boats and, you know overall tackle coolers and stuff it's not you know it's not harmful to anyone around you hopefully i was watching eye fish this is a shout out to eye fish victor where is he at up near chicago someplace I bantered around with him. His channel is iFish, like iPhone. And he was doing sort of what I do. He did some videos about selling equipment, tackle, rods, reels. And he had to explain himself by going to the backside of his house, which he lives in a duplex and he showed the back side of his house and i thought this was very good victor this was very good and he walked uh, it started to rain so he walked over to a tree and he s was saying no i'm not in trouble i'm not in financial ruin or anything i just have too much stuff too much tackle too many rods too many reels now I've sort of followed the progression of his channel. I mean, he's a freshwater crappy fisherman, used to be, I guess, catfish guy, never a bass guy, you know, fishing freshwater lakes and stuff like that up there. So it was, it kind of hit home when I was watching his because he said, I've got a wife, I got two little kids, he's got his boat, and he's talking about how there is rods and reels in every room every room he didn't say if there was rods and reels in the kitchen though but he said in his kids rooms or something he's got rods and reels in his bedroom he's got rods and reels he said he's got rods and reels circling the garage walls i thought he always lived in a little bigger house because he showed you know entire walls from one side to the other with rod racks you know with them all standing up and he's getting rid of stuff that he doesn't use that often. Now, it's not for business for him like it is for me. Okay, I love spares. I love having spares. That's probably my problem. When I find something I like and I use and it might be kind of difficult to get, I don't buy just one or two. And when I find something I like, I usually don't go outside that circle. Well, I've seen him getting into these, you know, Japanese brand uh, rods and stuff like that. So I guess he's finding out 
that he has way too much stuff and he's selling it off. So I can understand that. And that's the reason why I watched his video. I mean, I'm not into crappy fishing or cat fishing or carp fishing or anything, but I still watch. I watch all kinds of different stuff on YouTube. Uh, lately, I've been watching, and if you have not, if you live in a cave, if you live in a cave, you probably have not heard. Uh, if you're in a cave with, you know, over in Afghanistan or something with your generator and your refrigerator plugged in, how all these UFOs are being now, what it is is the Pentagon uh, cannot say no, that there isn't anything. They don't call them UFOs. This stuff is really coming out, man, I'm telling you. So it makes you feel, you say to yourself, right? You know, yeah, Beijing Biden, he ain't nothing but a piece of swamp scum. You know, why even worry about that? Because we may have a lot bigger fish to fry. You know, how 60 Minutes even did a thing a couple years ago, talking to two pilots that are now retired and how they literally chased a thing that looked like a, a Tic Tac that went right by like their carrier out in the Pacific and they chased it with their jets and they looked right at it and it mimicked their, what they were doing. And the guy that was in charge of it at the Pentagon, now he quit and he has no reason to lie. I mean, the guy was a, uh, he worked for the military or something, maybe even as a civilian or in the military in intelligence over in you know the Middle East and then got this job at the Pentagon taking care of, you know, supposed sightings. So there's all this stuff coming out because, like, now even the, um, the Navy ships have, like, radars or something. I don't know. I'm not into all that stuff. But they can chase stuff that's like supersonic missiles or whatever with a camera and a gun or whatever. I don't know. And they're, they're filming all this stuff. And what thing that was kind of funny is when they were talking to this one Navy pilot, he said there's two places on the East Coast that pilots, and maybe you know somebody out there that is a Navy pilot, Air Force pilot, commercial pilot, private pilot, I don't know. But this one pilot said off of Norfolk, Virginia, which we know around here what that is, every other license plate in this town is Virginia, off of Norfolk, Virginia, and he said Jacksonville, Florida. Almost every day, he said, there's a possibility of seeing a UFO. Well, the one guy that worked at the Pentagon said that they could do 200 knots and then go bloop, right into the ocean and probably do 200 knots underwater. 200 knots. So the guy said to him, well, what about submarines? And he goes, that's a whole nother ball of wax right there because the submarines see them or they track them on their radar and stuff, whizzing right by them underwater, going faster than anything could ever be. And I mentioned to, I think I mentioned to Orwalk that I had a uh, UFO sighting one time. I was like 13, 14 years old maybe or something. And I saw red lights out over a field where I lived. And the red lights, I was letting the dog in or letting the dog out or something on the back porch and we had some acreage you know and there was a big valley that went down and across that valley I saw a red light go stop then another red light come right up next to it and another red light go right up next to it and they just sat there and it looked like somebody pointing a laser this kind of really intense bright red light and of course, I'm like, mom, mom, come out here and see this. And I don't know if she saw it or not. And then the three lights that were sitting there just went <laughs> up into the sky, which is gone. But that's here and there. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the people walking the earth don't believe in anything, you know, but I believe that there's always something out there. So really what's going on around in America, I guess, is like nothing compared to all that. I would love to talk to a pilot or somebody on a ship who saw this stuff. I mean, because now the footage is all out there. Oh, well, I just wanted to wonder if everybody has an addiction because obviously 
Victor over at iFish channel does. I got all the rods and reels that I could ever use. And like I did, and some of you really benefited. Maybe I know a couple of you that are on YouTube have benefited. But I got rid of all my Daiwa Saltists, my 20 HCs. And the reason I did that is because I like continuity too. I love continuity. I'm having like doves and woodpeckers and blue jays and all this stuff are landing right here in, in my yard right here, out right next to the boat, which is right in front of me right here, see? And I like continuity. So I ended up getting a bunch of, um, when I sold, like, what was it, 10 Daiwa Saltists, I think it was. And then I cleaned out, I cleaned out $2,000 worth of the stuff, and it's still not all gone. There's still a couple pieces and a few things my mom wanted me to get rid of on eBay that I was selling. And I sold $2,000 worth of the stuff on eBay. But I got rid of all my saltist reels, Daiwa saltist reels, because I wanted continuity of Shimano um, Triton 100Gs across the board on everything on my boat. I mean, of course, I've got other reels. I've got my Daiwa Ryogas, and I got my Finor Spinners, and I've got my Ajimatic 300s from Japan that are JDM. But I want it across the board. So even like my float rig fishing tackle, I bought 100 uh, Triton 100G. Uh, Fighting Star Speedmasters, old ones. You can't even hardly find them. Because when I'm float rig fishing, I like five to one gear ratio at a minimum. And that's what they were. So I'm across the board, all continuity as far as rods are concerned. Thanks to whoever turned me on when I was talking about the Star aerial rods. I got a bunch of those now with two of the handcrafted series. And then I've got all my all my tigers and I've got like 10 12 striper rods medium light stripers I guess I'll save those for when you know I start doing my charters over in uh, like Pontchartrain Louisiana when I'm 99 years old all right well this was just a chit chat I see a lot of other people doing chit chat so thanks for watching put your comments down below of how badly you're addicted or you have an obsession with tackle, knives, rods, reels. I know y'all do, because I just showed you just a portion. I mean, just this much of what I got. And I got nobody to leave it to. So you better be nice to me if you want to be in my will. <laughs> See you later.